the centre of the badminton world is right here in Denmark through until Sunday. The beautiful city of Aarhus hosting one of the sport's iconic tournaments. But for the superstars who've gathered here this week, hoping to add their names to the Thomas and Uber Cup Roll of Honour, the path to glory is only just beginning. Hello and a warm welcome to our continuing coverage of the Thomas and Uber Cup. Here is the map of the participating nations all the way from Japan, top right of your screen, across Asia, to Europe, via Africa, we've got Algeria and Egypt here this week, and across to North America, Canada, on the left-hand side of your screen. Well, here's the tournament schedule. We're on the third day of five days of group stage action today. Uh, then on Thursday, the start of the knockout round, the Uber Cup quarterfinals. Uh, Friday, the Uber Cup semis, Thomas Cup quarterfinals. The weekend is the really big action. Thomas Cup semis, Uber Cup final on Saturday evening, and the Thomas Cup final is live on Sunday afternoon. Here's how the groups break down then in the Uber Cup, that's the women's competition. We're concentrating on the match today between Indonesia and France in Group A. In Group B, Thailand and India are the two favoured nations. Group C looks to be between Korea and Chinese Taipei with the two minnows, Tahiti and Egypt. And in Group D, we've got China, Denmark and Malaysia. One of those will have to go because only two from each group will make the quarters. Here's our schedule for this Monday then, kicking off momentarily as I mentioned with Indonesia against France. That will be followed at 1.30 local time, Indonesia against Thailand in the Thomas Cup and more men's action to follow this evening at 7 as Korea take on France. Well this was just a few moments ago, the Indonesian team huddle. And Pretty well choreographed it was too, as you can see. If their badminton is as good, they might take all the beating here this morning. So this is the focus of our attention. Indonesia obviously will start big favourites. They won their opening match. The French were beaten 5-love by Japan in their opener a couple of days ago. Let's show you our lineup in detail then. Uh, Gregoria Tunjun, a heavy favourite to give Indonesia a winning start against the world number 60, Mary Batimen. The second singles, on paper at least, looks a close call. Teenager Putri Wardani against promising Liani Uwe, who's well inside the top 100 herself. The first of the doubles to follow that, star billing to Apriyani Raheyu, one half of the winning pair at the Tokyo Olympics. Then we'll see the final singles. Nandini Aramni's first event of the year. She's up against Yared Oyo, who didn't feature for the French on Saturday. And we finish with doubles. Delphine Delwu, now partnered by Marie Batterman after Leah Palermo's nasty looking injury 48 hours ago. So set for action here, just waiting for the officials to come out on court. Just a reminder. As we look at the stats of Tunjung against Batterman, pretty symmetrical, look, 102 wins apiece and just three more defeats for the Frenchman, although she's obviously been competing in a lot of lesser tournaments, some of the international events, as opposed to uh, Tunjung, who's been involved with Super 300 events and above. Japan are the defending champions in this competition. I'll just take you outside momentarily. Look at that skyline. It is a beautiful part of the world. You'd never know, actually, that Aarhus is the second largest city in Denmark. We're on the eastern shore of Jutland. It's around about 190 kilometers northwest of Copenhagen, if you know your Denmark. It's about 120 miles in old money. And the city's population is around about 300,000, nearly a million, actually, in the greater Aarhus area, but you'd never know it. Doesn't feel like a big city, more like a, a town, really. Now, that's the football stadium and the athletics track in the background there, and we are in the uh, inside arena in the near near ground as we await the players entering the arena. The officials are right there. 
and we got a crowd in as well, which is great to report. We've missed them. Gregoria and Marie Batterman enters the arena for La Belle France. A little bit of strapping on that right thigh. Had that really nasty looking injury, as I mentioned a moment ago, to Leah Palermo in the uh, doubles on Saturday. Like a uh, cruciate ligament issue, she had to retire, obviously. Never met before, these two. Indonesia could pretty much confirm their passage through to the quarterfinals of the victory here today after coming through 4-1 in their opening match against uh, Germany. Give you some details then about these uh, two players. Quite a bit of distance between their respective rankings. Gregoria Tunyun, who's 22 now, that ranking of 21 currently, she has been up at 13. That was a couple of years ago, born in uh, central Java. She's actually been nominated twice for the uh, BWF Most Promising Player of the Year in 2017 and 18. Still waiting for a, a, a win in a Super 300 event or, or higher. She did get to the final of the side Modi a few years back and lost to PV Sindhu in the showpiece match. And her opponent is uh, Marie Batemen, who's seven years older and Tunyun, 60 in the world, that's pretty much the highest she's been. Started playing at just eight years of age, uh, Batman. And she finally became the national champion of France two years back after losing in the final twice, as early as 2013 and then again in 2017. And she has won a couple of uh, international events. She won in Belarus three years ago and then again in Algeria a year after that. Kamasha Robertson of Belgium is our chair umpire. And she will be supported by service judge Kevin Ban of the United States of America. edition of the Uber Cup since it was first held back in 1957. And they contest it every couple of years apart from 19, uh, every two years since 84, apart from last year of course due to the Covid issues, that's why we're staging it a year late. have won this trophy on three occasions. Only five countries have ever won it.
Indonesia, represented by Gregoria Mariska Tunji. Delegation to serve. So here we go, with Tinian getting us underway for the first match of his five match tie. And we will play all five, regardless of uh, the score. Put that down to a little bit of ring rust. Would normally have uh, killed that very easily. Oh, what an excellent shot that was from Batman. France got off to a, a, pretty, a pretty sluggish start against Japan on Saturday. They won't want to repeat that. That's exactly what Pinion was trying to do a couple of points ago, and that time she arrowed it down the line perfectly. Always looking to be proactive. I imagine trying to play as many short rallies as she can against Batterman. I'm going to let the French woman settle. She may have lost the point, but I think uh, Batman may take some heart from the fact that she was pretty competitive in that lengthy rally. Oh, that's delightful. Always that great touch. She was having to really stretch for that and still played it perfectly. Sort of the net by a whisker. So five straight points for the Indonesian. And Batman needs to just all the concentration here. She lets Tinian get away. Could be a, a pretty quick encounter, this. won actually three international events. I mentioned she got to that final of the side Modi in Lucknow. Still waiting for that kind of breakthrough one of the super 300 events. Error of judgment from the Indonesian there, that was good. We're going to feature not just this week but also in the Sudaman Cup if you were watching our coverage in Vanta in Finland the, the rest of the squad Fans. She was on duty, Kamasha Robertson, in the uh, Sudaman Cup a couple of weeks ago. Busy time for players and uh, umpires at the moment, which is great to report after the last 18 months or so. We've lost so many events. Spot on. She's tested her quite a lot with that round the head forehand as uh, the French woman, but so far, Tim Yun has been up to the task. Well, that's better play from Batman.
this queue. I don't think she's done a string. Two or three of those now from Tunyun. Wonderful deception. Didn't have that far to travel, uh, Batman, but never had a hope of getting there. I think that initial shot from Batman was actually going wide, but Tunyun played it. Came off right at the edge of the racket. in the hall. I think most of the players saying the far end has been preference. Far end is you look. Well, Tunyon absolutely convinced that that was a half volley from Batterman. Umpire not. Well, she had a very good view, Kanasha Robertson. Well, what Chun Yun mustn't do is let that affect her if she's upset. So back within a point, Batman. Oh, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. It's a very fitting way to go to the interval with a winner like that. Still, I wouldn't say seething, but she clearly was unnerved by that earlier decision from chair umpire Kamasha Robertson. But Batman had got to the shuttle. 11 9 it is after eight minutes of play. Let's see if we can show you that uh, point. Here it is. Make your own mind up at home. Did this actually land before Batman played the shot? No, I think it's a good decision. I think that's a really good decision. I think what confused Tun Yun was that Batman's racket clearly made contact with the court, but that's fine. And that she definitely got to it. So well played and well umpired. But uh, Tun Yun with a two point advantage. And they don't get the benefit of replays to make a split decision. She was bang on there, the Belgian official. Play. I think most players in, in Batterman's uh, position would, would probably just say if, it had, if they'd hit it on the half volley. The vast majority would. So it's good to be able to clear up the fact that, that Batterman did absolutely nothing wrong. And she's staying competitive in this opening game. Appreciated by her teammates watching on. That's a wonderful backhand. That is an incredibly difficult shot to play. I'm not even looking at the court when you're playing that from behind you. Superb. Well, oh, fighting fire with fire, Gregoria Tunyu. But she's having to raise a game because 
And Batterman is keeping her honest here. 13 11. That's a good lead. Can't shake her off at the moment, can she? Kaguri Atinian. Well, just the wrong time for that to happen. Service judge Kevin Ban ruling that that serve was one point above 1.15 uh, meters. That's what he looks through that tripod with the with the plastic block. He's got two lines that tell him if the serve has been delivered from too high, and he said it was. But she's right back with the next point. of exasperation from Batten, but as soon as she hit that, she knew. And every point at this stage of the game, critical. In. Well, Tsunyan couldn't have done much more. <laughs> Four marks for effort and application. But it doesn't always get you the point. <laughs> she did well to get that over the net, actually, to angle the racket like that. But in the end, Batman found the winner. Well, I think Batterman tactically has got this absolutely right so far. She didn't play particularly well in her match on Saturday, lost 13 and 10 to Sayaka Takahashi. But today she's getting continuing a little rattled here, making her play outside of a comfort zone. That's really the the key to it, so many round the head forehand she's had to play. And now she's forcing some errors, and now she's in front. French uh, squad in the audience getting very excited here especially now Put it wide. What a chance. Thought she'd made that. She worked the opening perfectly. She had virtually the whole court to aim at. Didn't have to go near the line. How costly might that be? One point in front. But if she loses this game, she will have nightmares about that. That backhand cross court as it was there for the taking. Indonesian starting to rally to the cause now. Yeah. 
Well, that was called in, and straight away, Tinian is challenged. Oh, how big is this at 17 all? Did it click the line? It did not. Well, that's perfectly illustrates why these challenges are a great idea. When you've got the technology, it's such a crucial stage. Had we not had it, Batman would have got the point, and justly. But the job is not done for Gregoria Tunyu. Obviously, she keeps that challenge. She's got two, it may not matter. Wonderful, wonderful stuff from Tinian. And it's earned her three game points. But she has had to really lift her level here. Characteristically, hitting that straight into the uh, hitting zone and from that range, mid-court. Batman still believes here, 18-20. She had to be at her absolute best. 21-18, she takes the opening game. But Marie Batterman will have recurring nightmares about that backhand she missed at such a crucial stage in that opening game. And then, of course, we had the, the correct challenge from uh, Tun Young. But the scoreboard will simply say 21-18 in 16 minutes. So it's gone with form, but the scoreline does not tell the whole story. See, she was marooned at the back of the court, Batum, and never going to get to that. Well, this is going to be a massive test of character for the French woman. Having lost, albeit narrowly, that opening game, our coach will need to emphasise the positives, I would reckon. She had a starring role in that first game as well, the chair umpire. Tunyung just gets the feeling that Batman is starting to wane a little bit. She will punish it. 
sometimes you can just feel a little bit sorry for yourself after losing a tight game like that, especially under the circumstances. That was right in the hitting zone. Glorious touch. Over. One, two. That bodes well, which is not over the disappointment of losing that opening game. Just get the sense she's starting to find a range a little bit now, Tunyu. And as much as Batten would have been disappointed at losing the opening game, I think Tunyu's um, major emotion would have been relief, really. Because she was in a, a real battle for much of that opener. Oh, she's challenging. She thought she'd made it. Call was out. I always feel this is the hardest one to see in terms of a player challenger when you're that far away from the shuttle on the back line and it was long. Again, great judgment from Tun Yun. I think she just fell over the net. And again. Seven, two. Well, there was some anger in that, wasn't there, from Batman? You can see it. Tunyun's just struggling with the game a little bit that she's not happy. Yes, she's ahead, but feels that she's not playing at the level she would want. That's a bit wasteful. She lost a little bit of heart, maybe. Well, oh, that was an opportunity. And she's very, very fortunate to win the point. And net very hard and just trickled over. never going to get over. Just snatched at that backhand a little bit. That's it.
was a very late decision to play that from Tin Young. She initially, I think she was going to leave it, thinking it might drift out. It, it may have done, but it was too close to just let it land. So back within potentially manageable proportions now on the scoreboard. Back to me. Well, that was uh, superb. And she had an 11 6 lead at the interval. Tin Young getting it done, even if she's not completely happy with her own game. Could have gone either way there, cross court or uh, down the line. him in a little bit in that rally, the Indonesian. really won that point expression tells you and I think she's resigned to her fate now mistake creeping into Tinian's game but should have done enough <laughs> that's a that's almost cruel. She's used that shot to such good effect. Drew Batterman in. Wasn't the worst lift in the world, but that's just a blind shot. And Drift took that in. going wide. I think the rest of the French team no, they're still going to be waiting for their, haven't actually won a game yet, they lost uh, five love to 
Japan on Saturday and all those matches won two games to love. And high hopes at one stage in the first game here, but since then it's become just a little bit one-sided. But it may be a bit too little too late for Marie Batterman, but at least she's not going down without some kind of a fight. match will be another singles. Normally uh, doubles is the second match but because Batterman's involved in one of the later doubles I prefer the maximum amount of time to recover. Just a couple of points now needed by Gregorio Junior. She was in trouble for the moment, she had to backtrack. And here are eight match points for Gregoria Tunyu. Just see, she's, she's not, not happy at all, is she? Even though she's uh, on the verge of winning the match. Just look at the body language there. You wouldn't think she's about to uh, claim victory, would you, looking at that? Let's It'll be a lap. Well, by her own admission, it wasn't vintage, uh, Gloria Tunyon, but it was good enough. 21-13 the score in that second game, and she gives Indonesia the opening match in this tie. It was nip and tuck in the opening game, and she came through eventually 21-18. Second game was more straightforward. 33 minutes on court. And just the start that the Indonesians wanted. Remember, having won in their opening match, the victory here pretty much puts them through to the quarterfinals, where much tougher tests lay ahead. from Marie Batterman who started so brightly 
but just couldn't sustain it. So Indonesia now need to capitalise on that good start. In the next match, it's the second singles. Putri Wardani up against Leonis Uwe. Stay with us for coverage of that. Well, a warm welcome back to the Sellers Arena. This is where we are. You can see the athletics track and the football pitch in the background. In the foreground, the Sellers Arena with seating for up to 5,000 people. 